What's up, YouTube? Today, I've got the Bamboo X1C out here, and we're gonna do some upgrade on this thing. How many of you guys really are annoyed with the nozzle change on here? Because I, I am. I know a lot of people are. So when it comes to changing the nozzle, because I wanna go to a 0.2 or a 0.4 or 6, something like that, I have to remove the two screws in there. You gotta drop it down. There's some wiring you gotta unplug. If you don't already have like a new fan and a thermal resistor, you gotta remove it off that one. You gotta put thermal paint. It, it, there's a lot going on. So today we have the Panda Rebo. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about this. There's a couple different versions. There's one for the X1, one for the P1. It's just got different wiring on it. This uses the Revo nozzles. So you're able to do nozzle changes with just one hand on this thing. Just reach in there, twist it out, put your new one in, and you're good to go. It's advertised saying you can change this nozzle in 30 seconds. I don't know if we can do it or not. We'll try. Uh, 30 seconds is pretty quick uh, to unscrew it all the way out and screw a new one back in. You gotta be pretty quick to do that, but regardless of that, it is still a very quick nozzle change compared to the stock. So here I did mention there is two different versions. There's the X1 and the P1. The difference in these two is gonna be your wiring for the X1 and P1 is just a little bit different. That's all that is. These are the same nozzles used in all the other Revos out there. So you, if you have a Revo system already, this is kind of nice because you already have the nozzles for it. So this is kind of nice. It does show you on the page. Just be careful and you have to run the wires out and then up. Don't pull it straight up or it will bend the wires. These things are not cheap. So they are at $129. You can get 5% off if you use code LEMARY3D at west3d.com. Check that out. You can get you a little bit of a discount. It's showing here that's 40 millimeters cubed as your flow rate. I don't know how accurate that is. I believe that may be with the high flow nozzle. Um, I can't see it being any other way. Uh, so the high flow is right here, your obsidian and your standard. They're probably calculating that with the high flow nozzle on there. So this is a drop-in upgrade for your X1C, P1S, P1P system. Uh, it's got some tech specs here for different heats and different things like that. This shows the difference in your two different ones. Your X1C is here with your wires. It's got two separate wires. The P1, P and P1S is all on the one plug there. So it shows what you get in there. And that is about it. So let's go ahead and get the old one removed out of here. And we're going to install the new Panda Revo into this one. I'm going to show you just how simple this is. It's going to be a quick video. So just hang out for that. Make sure you don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for us. It helps us out a lot. If there's anything, any topic or anything like that you want me to cover, leave it in the comment section as well. I will try to do that. So the first thing we'll do is pop this cover off, set it off to the side here. It just so happens the set over there is usually pretty nice. And what we have here is three sets of wires. We will have to move the fan over to our new hot end. So let's get all this unplugged, which is your fan, your hot end here, and your thermal resistor. Pull it all out so it's ready. And then we can unscrew the two screws holding the hot end and slide it down. Just pull the, both of these screws out. Now we can take the hot end and pull down and wiggle. Pull straight down and wiggle and it comes out. And there we go. Looks like it may be a little bit dusty on this fan. So now we have our new hot end and our old one here. The difference in them on this case is this one has the fan on it. We need to move the fan over here. Other than that, we have everything else on here. This has the heater and thermal resistor built in. So we just need to bring the fan over to here. By the way, the previous screws are 2.0 and so are these, which is kind of handy. So before we go to install this, I will say a warning with this fan. So if you're messing around with your screwdriver and stuff and slip, it's very easy to break one of these fins. So be careful with that. Before we install this, this needs to be positioned in the correct way. And right now it's not. This needs to be aiming the opposite direction. So you can try and turn it. Um, you may have to pop it off to do that, but mine just turned pretty simple there. You can see, you can turn it left, but typically not right, just because that's the way the spring is. So turn it to the proper position first. You want this facing the back and then we can fold this in and then bring that up that channel. Then we can go ahead and put the fan on. That, tighten it up. Just be sure that your wires didn't come out or get jammed or pinched or something in there. You don't want your wires to get pinched. 
And there it's ready to be installed onto the machine. So we can go ahead and put that in there now. This is the old one. You see it's still got the same mounting position holes and all that. We just moved the fan over. So we need to plug all these wires in first. I typically do. I plug these in first and then I will hide the wires, do the little the spot that holds it, and then we'll bolt it on and test it out. So here we go. So we're just going to plug all three of these wires in. We've got our hot end, transistor wire, and fan wire. You do this however you want. You can just pull on the wires a little bit to make sure you got them plugged in well. And then we can slide these wires back behind this little groove. It's meant to hold your wires out of the way. It is a little bit tricky to get these thicker wires, these heater wires in there and in that groove. So this will line up properly. But once you get it, it'll go in just fine. And we can put our screws back in. Once that's all tight, you want to tighten your nozzle up here, make sure it's snug all the way in there. And that's good. And we can just pop this back over the top. And you're all set. There we have it. Our nozzle's in, installed, and we are all good to go. So that was a quick job. That didn't take very long at all. But if you did want to change your nozzle to a 0.2 or something, that's the process that you would have to go through to change each nozzle. So it's not fun. So this way is much easier. I do want to know, I'm going to test real quick and count down how long it takes me to remove this nozzle, pick another one up, and install it back in there. So let's see how long it takes. And go. And time. 29 seconds. I actually beat it by one second. That's pretty good. I didn't expect that to happen, actually. I figured it would be a little bit over, but that was me really rushing to get it done, too. So you can get it changed in 30 seconds. Regardless, it's way quicker than what it previously would have been. So that's great. So I'll go ahead and do a test print on this and see how it prints, at least, and make sure everything's okay, show you the model, and we'll be good to go. So let's run a test on it and see how it does. Honestly, I expected that print to be a lot bigger than that, but that's what I get for having my wife who loves ducks print out the first test print on there. Other than being very small, the print turned out good. It didn't cause me any flow issues. I did print it kind of fast. So I don't have any data on how fast this thing can actually flow. It does say 40 millimeters cubed. I don't think it's gonna be that fast, even with the high flow. If you wanna see me do a video on that, like a flow test, let me know in the comments. Uh, make sure you guys out there like and subscribe, share the video, and I will see you on the next one. Have a good day.